Let's begin by creating a new empty layer right on top of the background layer because we want to work non-destructively. We don't want to alter the background layer, we want to have the option to return to step 0 if we don't like something, so creating a separate layer for the next step is crucial. I will zoom in to have a closer view by holding down Z on the keyboard and the first thing I want to do is to get rid of these brown areas. I'm going to use the healing brush tool for this and make sure you have also selected current and below from the sample options. You need to sample from an area before using this tool so hold down the ALT key and then click on a similar area where you want to sample from. I will soften my brush and choose an optimum size for me and then brush away these two brown spots right here. This is actually a very easy operation, you just have to practice it and you will do it just fine, don't worry. Oh, and by the way, uh, sometimes I will speed up the video because time is so precious and I don't want you to waste it entirely on my tutorials. The main parts are the most important and we will focus on them, of course. Okay, we are done with this and now we will make an empty group and we will call it Whiten. Alright, I will create three adjustment layers, a hue saturation and two curves layers. For the hue saturation layer, I will drag the slider until minus 100. We have all these layers inside the group that will affect the teeth. Exactly, the teeth only, because we will use a layer mask later. But instead of applying the same layer mask on all three adjustment layers, I will do some cool stuff here. I will apply the layer mask on the group itself and from that point, no matter how many adjustment layers I will have inside this group, they will affect the same area on the photo. So with the group selected, I'm holding down ALT and then press on the Create Layer Mask button right here. Because the mask is black for the moment, it will hide all the effects from the group, so don't be scared because it's perfectly normal, but remember, black is always hiding on the layer mask and white or gray will let the effects go through the mask. Ok, let's start doing the selection for the teeth. There are a few ways to do this, using the pen tool for example or by making the selection with the brush tool, why not? But you know what, I will do a part of the selection with the pen tool and the other part with the brush just to show you two different methods. I'll start with the pen, by hitting P on the keyboard, I'm choosing the pen tool and I start by creating some points, I'm dragging them to make a quick and rough selection, which I will refine later. It doesn't have to be perfect, uh, clicking and dragging will give you the option to create tangents, which are creating curves, and this way you can easily follow the contour of the teeth. I personally love the pen tool because it's capable of doing very precise selections. It's very powerful. Alright, the shape is ready now and I'm gonna right click inside of it and choose Make Selection. And I will add a feather of 0.5 pixels, that's enough. Ok, and now comes the fun part. Make sure the mask from the group is selected and hit Shift and F5. Choose White and then click OK. And now we have a mask for the teeth, for the top part at least. We can refine the mask and I will show you how to use the brush to select and affect the bottom area of the teeth. Select the layer mask and with the soft white brush just paint white over the bottom area of the teeth. You can use a flow of 50-60% to do this. You can also check the top part of the teeth and refine some of the areas. Paint with white to apply the effect on the layer mask and with black to hide parts from it. You can always switch between the foreground and background colors by pressing X on the keyboard. X gonna give it to you! <laughs> ok, I'm happy with the selection now and we are going back to the hue saturation layer. Right now we have the slider on minus 100, but this doesn't give enough realism, right? That's why you need to take back some of the color. Let's say you drag it back to minus 60 or minus 70. It looks more real now, so we are going a step further by selecting the curves layer 
adding a point here and then dragging it up until we feel that there is enough brightness on the teeth but without blowing out the highlights. We have a good result already but we need to take care of these parts of the teeth where some areas are a little underexposed. We will use the second curves layer for this. We will create a point again and pull it up until we see that those areas are brightened up. We will use the layer mask here because we want to apply this exposure on some areas only. I will invert the layer mask and then paint in with white on the chosen parts. I'm selecting the mask and then holding down Ctrl and I on the keyboard to invert the mask into black and from here I will just select the brush by pressing B on the keyboard and with a fill of 2-3% I will paint in the areas which need some more brightness. Keep in mind that even if we are using the curves layer mask here, we are still restricted by the main layer mask which is applied to the group, so we can't go outside that area and that's a good thing. This step is a fine-tuned step and you will need maybe some time to finish it, but when it's done you will notice the differences when you turn that curves layer on and off. Alright, let me show you a before and after. I'm pressing the Alt key and then on the visibility of the background layer, this will keep on the screen the original layer only. So that's the starting point and this is the final image. It's a huge, it's a major difference and I hope you can apply this on your photos if it's necessary.